This is a demonstration of how to do a proper literature search in the healthcare databases via Evidence Search. From the Evidence Search website, if you go up to the top and click on Journals and Databases, then if you click on Healthcare Databases Advanced Search. Here you'll need to add, add in your Athens username account. If you have an account and forgotten your password, you can get a reminder from here. If you don't have an account and you want to register for an Athens and check your eligibility for one, you can also do that from here as well. So once you've entered your Athens details, if you click login, it will take you through to a list of all the different databases that you can access. We're going to do Medline, so let's go down and click on Medline. This takes us into the Medline database. Now there are two ways to search the database. One is to use your own keywords in the title and abstract. When you're searching the databases, you're not searching the full text of every article. You're searching a small part of that full text, which is generally the title and abstract. So that's the first way to search. The second way is to utilise the functions of the database and to search using the thesaurus. The thesaurus is also known as mesh terms, medical subject headings, control vocabulary, indexing terms and descriptors. They're all talking about the same thing. When articles then are added into the database as a record, the articles are sent to an indexer. They read the full text and they'll apply then about 12 to 15 indexing terms or thesaurus terms to the record in the database in order to reflect the content of the article. The reason they do that is twofold. Authors will often talk about the same thing but use slightly different terminology. So for example, one author may talk about heart attack, the other may talk about a myocardial infarction and a third may talk about MI. They're all talking about the same thing but using slightly different words. Varicella, chickenpox, another example. This is also particularly true with the American spellings. So the Americans spell tumour, T-U-M-O-R, but the UK spelling is T-U-M-O-U-R. So you need to be a bit careful when you're using the databases. But the idea of the thesaurus terms is that they capture these differences in terminology. Thesaurus terms are also useful for focusing your search. Any thesaurus terms applied reflect the actual content of the article, whereas your terms that may appear in the title and abstract may not actually reflect the full text of that particular article. However, thesaurus terms are also applied retrospectively, so it's best practice to actually start to search the databases using a mixture of both thesaurus terms and your own keywords in the title and abstract, and this is going to show you how to do it. So for our demonstration, we're going to search for articles that compare the use of ibuprofen and paracetamol in young children with a fever. So how do we start? Well, we've got four concepts to search on. Ibuprofen, paracetamol, children and fever. Always search on your age groups last. We're going to start then with ibuprofen. First thing we do is type in the term we want to search on. So if we type in ibuprofen, and the first thing we need to check is whether there's a thesaurus term available for this particular concept. So if you tick the map to thesaurus and then click search, it will take you through to the thesaurus page. It thinks you're trying to find terms that talk about ibuprofen, which we are. If you weren't sure whether that was the right term, if you click on the scope note, it will give you a definition of what that term is actually used for. In this case, this is the right term. You've then got a number of different options. You can explode, make it the major heading, and you can apply subheadings as well. If you explode your thesaurus term, all it means is that you're not going to miss anything on that particular topic. That's always quite a good thing. So if we explode to start with, we can also, if we wanted to, make this particular thesaurus a major, major heading. And all that means is of the 12 to 15 terms that were applied to the record, Maybe three or four of them will have been identified as being the major focus of the article by the indexer. Again, this is quite a subjective decision made by the indexer, so best practice is to leave it off to start with. If you find that you're getting too many results, you can always go back and explode and tick the major box as well. You've also got the option of applying subheadings. If you're only interested, for example, in the poisoning aspects of ibuprofen, we could simply select the toxicity subheading and just focus on that. However, best practice to start with is to actually not apply any subheadings at all and just scope out the literature to see what's there. So, once you've identified your thesaurus term, you explode it and you search. 
takes us back into the database and we've got line one of the database, Medline. We've exploded ibuprofen and we have about 6,000 results. Don't panic about large numbers at this stage. What we want, don't want to do is miss anything. It's much harder to get things back into our search if we've missed it to start with. So now we've identified the thesaurus term for our first concept. The next stage is to think about, well, what terms would we use to search for it? And just search for those then in the title and abstract. And we could start simply again with ibuprofen, title and abstract, which it defaults to, and click search. So we have line two of our Medline search. We search for ibuprofen in the title and abstract. The next stage is to think, well, what else is it known as? And for drugs, there may be particular brands that might be useful to search on. I'm going to search on Brufen. Again, we don't need to map this because we know it's an ibuprofen and we've already got the, the thesaurus heading for that. So we simply type in Brufen, search in the title and abstract. And finally, we may think of other brands as well, so Nurofen is an obvious one. And again, we just want to search in the title and abstract. And we carry on in this way until we thought about searching on all our different synonyms or related terms to ibuprofen. Once we're happy that we've got them all, we need to put all our ibuprofen terms together in one line. And the way we do that is if we tick the boxes that, the lines that we want to combine together, in this case lines one to four, we need to combine our terms together with and or or. In this instance, because we're combining terms that mean the same, we're going to use or. So the database puts all these four lines together in one line and it will throw out any duplicates as well. So that's the first concept of our search done. The next stage is to go on to our second concept, which is paracetamol. And we simply repeat the process. Just be careful that you spell your terms correctly, otherwise it may not map to the right term. So we type in paracetamol, the first thing we need to do is to map it to the thesaurus. So we tick the map to the thesaurus box and we click search. This time it's mapped us not to the same term paracetamol, but to acetaminophen, which is a form of paracetamol, so I'm happy with that. Best practice is just to explode and search. Once we've found our thesaurus term, again, we just pick out the terms that we know to search on that relate to that concept in just the title and abstract and search. And Calpol is another option, again, just in the title and abstract and search. The next stage is to put all our paracetamol terms together in one line. So we want line six, seven, and eight. And because these terms all mean the same, we're gonna combine our terms together with all and click combine selected. We now have two lines to our search. We've got all our ibuprofen terms in line five, and we've got all our paracetamol terms in line nine. We want articles that talk about both ibuprofen and paracetamol, so we need now to combine these two concepts together. This time it's and. The next stage is to think, well, what else do we need to search on? We've got our condition of fever to search on, so we start again. We type in our term, fever. First thing we need to do is to map it to the thesaurus to see if there's a term there relating to our concept and click search. This takes us through to a big list of thesaurus terms this time because there's lots of different types of fever. If you had a specific fever in mind, you could go for that. Otherwise, you just take the one that relates most broadly to it. So we're just going to pick explode fever and search. And again, now we've found the thesaurus terms, we just search for our own terms in just the title and abstract. Again, pyrexia is another way of saying fever in just the title and abstract and click search. And finally, febrile in the title and abstract and click on search. 
Now we need to put all our fever terms together in one line. So we select all our fever terms by ticking the boxes and we have to combine them. This time because they all mean the same, if we're all talking about the same thing, we combine with all and click combine selected. So now we've got all our fever terms, we now have to combine them back into the rest of our search. And what we need to do is we want articles that talk about both paracetamol and ibuprofen, which is everything in line 10. And we want articles which talk about both these things and fever. So now we need to combine our fever terms in line 15 with our ibuprofen and paracetamol terms in line 10. And because we want all these to be present, it's and. And now we're down to 205, which is a bit more manageable, but we've still got more things we can do to narrow the search down further. And this is now where we can start to look at the limits. So if you click on apply limits and scroll down, there are lots of different limits that you want, may want to look at to apply to your search. Most people want English language. So if you click on language, you can click English. Most people are interested in human rather than experimental type studies. So again, under the human or animal tab, you can click on humans. For our particular search, we have an age group in mind. And if you click on age groups, you can see that you can limit to specific ages, or specific populations. Quite broad populations here, children and adults. But then if you scroll down, these are split up further. And for our search, we're going to take children under the age of six. So I'm going to select all the limits under the age of six. You can also limit by publication type or study design. Because this question is looking at comparing two interventions, we're going to look for randomised controlled trials. And if you scroll down on the publication type, you will come to randomised controlled trials. So if we select that, I'm also going to look at meta-analyses as well which are combinations of RCTs, randomised controlled trials. So once you've picked out your limits, you can of course add a date if you wanted to. Once you've picked out the ones you wanted to, you can scroll down and click on search. The database will now add those limits back to your search and I'm down to 36. And if you click on the number 36, you will then be able to view the results that you've found. And what you will see as you scroll down is a list of titles that have been pulled by your search. And most of them, if not all of them, will talk about the topic of your particular choice. You can maximise the number you want to view on one page. It will save you scrolling through many pages. You can also display the abstracts on the same page as well, so you don't need to keep clicking into the titles to look at the abstracts. When you're scrolling through, you can either take all the studies at once and pull them off, or you can tick the ones that you want to pull off and look at later. And you just simply scroll down and tick the boxes at the side for the ones you want. So if we select a few to pull off, and then scroll down. Obviously, if you've got more than one page, you'll need to click on the pages until you've finished your search. But at the bottom of every page, you will have the results box that allows you to pull off the results that you've selected. And it'll either pull off just the ones that you've pulled ticked, in which case there's six, or I can choose to take all the results in one go. You've got a number of different options for how you want to view your results, PDF, and you've got the format. If you want to see the title and the abstract and the link to full text if available, choose medium. You can also include the search history, that's done automatically. And to pull them off, you can either email them directly to yourself or you can pull them off, view them and save them. I always save the results, firstly because it checks that actually the file is there and it isn't corrupted. And once you've opened the file and you know that it's OK, you can then go up, file and save copy. And what you get is a PDF of the titles that you've selected, 
followed by the search strategy, followed by a list of all the titles and abstracts with links to full text if available via your Athens account. Once you've done your search and pulled off your results, you can then, if you wanted to, save your search strategy. And if you scroll back up to the top, there is a save all function for you to do this. If you click on save all, what you have to do is give your search a name. And click on save. If you wanted to create an alert so that you got an email with the new references that match your search criteria when they were added to the database, you can create your alert and save the strategy at the same time. If you then click on save, it will flip you straight back to the search page and your search is now saved on your Athens account. And no matter where you log in next time and access the databases, if you then click on save searches, once you're in one of the databases, you'll then be able to retrieve and rerun your save search. Doing a search in this way is quite structured. So you need to think about the concepts that you want to search on, the keywords, search on each concept separately. So starting with one, say ibuprofen, try and find a thesaurus term if the one is available, explode it, and then think about all the different ways in which it might be described to search in the title and abstract. Once you've thought of all your synonyms for that topic, you can then pull all your synonyms and related terms together in one line, and then you go on to the next concept, paracetamol in our search. Do the same process again, pull all the paracetamol terms together in one line, and then combine your two concepts together, your ibuprofen and paracetamol terms to start with. If you have other concepts to search on, you can then go on and search on these in the same way. And doing your search in this structured, logical way will help you narrow down your terms. And also by using both thesaurus terms and your own keywords, you will minimise the risk of missing any relevant studies that are out there.